Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Hi, Crowd everybody. Church. Hello, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy, happy, Easter, happy Easter. Easter. And to you, Sal. Happy Easter. Thank you. How's your Easter Sunday going so far? Yeah, really good, thank you. We've had a brilliant day so far. We've done uh, Easter egg hunt in the garden. You're never too old for that, let me tell you. <laughs> my girls will tell you that. Um, my 18-year-old said to me, are we going to have an Easter egg hunt this year? Like, please, can we have an Easter egg hunt this year? Yeah, oh, wow. of course. It's, you know, let's put some chocolates in the garden, definitely. I feel um, like I've missed so, a trick yeah. there, Sam. I feel yeah, like I've missed that. a trick. And uh, we've also, we've watched my nephew be baptised this morning from his church down in Bath, which is as absolutely amazing. Fantastic. So, yeah. What's his name? Really good. Seb. The fabulous Seb. Well Seb. Love you, Seb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Seb. That's awesome. Getting baptised on Easter Sunday is particularly special, I feel. Mm, if you're going to get baptised, do it on Easter Sunday. Makes absolutely. a lot of sense. So well done, Seb. Well, so we definitely did not have the Easter egg hunt. Uh, I feel like we've grown out of that and maybe we should grow back into no. it. You yeah. never grow out of it. Come on, Matt. Surely you would even be happy running around the garden oh, looking for chocolate. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all for it. That's that's not that's not a problem for me. I'm definitely... Exercise and tomorrow. chocolate at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely speaking of easter eggs out i've got one for you oh have you yeah it's right here oh, it's right what? here do you think what we could do that? that thing the christmas magic thing do you think we could try that easter do you magic. think it works at easter go on let's give it a go have you got the special button uh, oh, 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 oh 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 he hasn't got the special button look at that goodness. Oh, look at that! You bought Happy me Easter, Easter eggs. I did. Oh, thanks, Matt. Happy Lovely. Easter. Divine chocolate I think as well. You have to go around the garden for them. Is that good chocolate? Is it? <laughs> Not the cheap yeah, yeah. stuff. Not the cheap yeah. stuff, is it, Matt? <laughs> Thank stuff. you. As if I would buy you the cheap stuff, Sal. As if. Well, I just hope you know better than that, Matt. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, everybody of you watching, welcome to Crowd Church Livestream. It's great to have you here. Happy, happy Easter. Easter is the best day in the Christian calendar, so we're very excited about it. It's great that you could join us wherever you are in the world watching us. Uh, it's brilliant that you can join with us as we do this live stream. Please do say hi in the comments. Uh, it'd be great to connect with you. Great to hear from you. Uh, Matt Crew here has put excellent so we're going to get all the Easter puns coming Easter along pun. here, aren't we? Loving it. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, we just really want to give you a warm welcome today and hope that you feel really at home with us on this Easter Sunday afternoon. Uh, let's just say hello to a few people that are in the comments already. Hi, Nicola and Sharon. Great to see you. Patrick, great to have you with us this afternoon. Matt, James, you are all very welcome. And if you're watching this later on as well, we hope that you get loads out of it and feel really welcome too. But you know what I am loving this week, Matt? Uh, I'm going to guess the sunshine. I am loving the sunshine, but more than that, there's no echo on the live stream. There oh, is no oh echo. Dear. There is no echo uh, on the live oh stream. You're right. I got ready for the sunshine. Sorry, I was going to be excited. With yeah, the no, no, it wasn't the uh, sunshine, Matt. It was the, it was the echo. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, tell the 80s they can have their glasses back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I worked hard to get these glasses. I tell you, I'll have you know, these are these. OK, write in the comments if you like my sunglasses. Yes or no. I just I think they're cool. But then maybe it's just me. Okay. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> See how brilliant it is about the echo when I can say, say yeah, whatever. Yeah. When you can riff. I'm going to bring that echo back if you get too cheeky. I just want you to know. I'm not, uh, the button okay. <laughs> that says well, echo. Okay. Well, let's, Matt, I think that you should share, before we carry on a little bit more, I think you should share your T-shirt with us. That looks oh, pretty yeah, yeah. special. That special T-shirt you've got on today. I just need to cue something up here to show you my T-shirt because okay. uh, we, we need a bit of background music. Ready? Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Okay, that's enough Kung Fu fighting. An Easter pun. You've got to love an Easter pun. You've well done, You've got to love the love Easter it. pun. Every bunny was Kung Fu fighting. Oh, yes. Welcome to Easter. And your congrat uh, sorry, congratulations to me, by the way, for putting that song in everybody's head. Yeah, that'll be it now for the rest of the day, won't it? We'll all be, <laughs> we'll all be coming back to that song thinking, where is 
Where have I heard that today? You heard it here. So you should we tell everybody first. what's coming up today then, Matt? Absolutely. So if you are new to Crowd, let me let me just explain a little bit about what's going on. So Sal and I are going to host the service today. We're going to be going live till probably around 4.50, I'm guessing, somewhere around there, 5 o'clock. Uh, we usually go less than an hour. And during this hour, we are going to have uh, a talk um, with me in my bunny t-shirt. We're going to look at what the Easter story is. Uh, we've got some worship and reflection time coming up, which will last about five minutes. And then we've got the Q&A time, so where you and I get to have a lovely conversation about all things to do with the Easter story. I hope you're prepared. Absolutely. Yeah, really prepared for that, ready to go. But also, we want to know what you want us to discuss. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if you've got a question about Easter or something to do with what Matt says in his talk or anything, really, then please pop it in the comments and we will do our best to get to your question during our question and answer time. So definitely. Or we've got the WhatsApp number, haven't we, Matt? We have. We make the well WhatsApp done, Sal. There we go. <laughs> I just can't do it. I just can't do it properly. <laughs> There's the WhatsApp number. If you would like to get in touch with us, not via the comments, another way, then please feel free to use the WhatsApp number. We'd also love to pray for you if you've got anything that needs praying for. Yeah, um, we'd love to do that. So please get in touch with us any way you like. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. It'd uh, be great to pray for you, especially if you're sick and you need healing. Just let us know. Uh, we would definitely love to pray for you there. Or if you're like Sal and can't actually point down and have issues <laughs> it's doing not that. that. Everything's, everything's <laughs> reversed. Everything's... <laughs> I, oh, I watching point. Sal trying to point to the WhatsApp number is really <laughs> funny. It's because everything does get back to front on the cameras. I, I, I do have to explain to people why you're struggling with it. But it's just really funny watching you trying to point to that number. Go on, one last yeah, time. I, I, won't, I won't point to it anymore. I'll just, I'll just kind of... There Just you go. <laughs> the WhatsApp number. <laughs> uh, can we move swiftly on? <laughs> we can move swiftly on indeed. So let me just explain to you a bit about Crowd. If you're new to Crowd, we are an online church for those that might not see the point of church uh, and want to know more about Jesus and how he can help us live a meaningful life. Everybody is welcome here, uh, regardless mm. of where you're at on your Christian journey. You know, on the... Um, on the post that we put explaining that we've got the Easter service coming up, there were some really interesting questions and comments going on. And it was great to see those, you know, just really fascinating. So uh, thank you for joining those conversations. Uh, keep them coming in the comments during this live stream. It would be great to connect with you and hear from you. Absolutely. And, you know, if you've got a question, then then probably lots of other people have got that same question as well. So do feel free to pop that in and we will do our best to certainly chat about it and bring up some different answers that you might not have thought about before. So should we get straight into it then, Matt? I think we should. Now, let me give a little bit of a background into this. Now, uh, again, if you're new to Crowd, what we have been doing is we have been working our way through Mark's Gospel, which is, in fact, the oldest gospel in the New Testament. Uh, and it was written by a chap called Mark, who was, in effect, the scribe for Peter, uh, one of the disciples of Jesus. And we've been working our way through that. And today... We're kind of pausing as we talk about Easter. Now, we're almost at the end of the story in Mark where we get to the Easter story. So this is kind of like an advanced, an advanced look, if you like. You're, kind of, you're almost at the end of the book and you're just skipping through a few chapters to find out what's yeah. going on because it's getting it's so a interesting. Peak. It's, it's a sneak, sneak peek. peek. That's exactly yeah. the phrase I was looking yeah. for, Sal. So thank you. Sneak peek. And then we're going to be coming back, aren't we, Matt, to look at some of the elements of um, the Easter story in a bit more detail. Absolutely. Yes, we are. So this is kind of the sneak peek. The following weeks, we're going to get into it into a whole bit more detail. But uh, we're going to play a video for you now. Then we're going to get into the talk. My advice is this, right? If you are listening to this on your headphones, turn them up a little bit because you want good quality, loud sound while this video is playing. Not too loud that you make yourself deaf or turn your speakers up uh, to get the full effect of what's going on. I'll be back in a few seconds time to do the talk and then uh, Sal and I'll be back after this. So uh, shall we crack on? Let's do it. Let's do it.
Wow, just wow. I mean, I get goosebumps watching that video. I don't know about you, but it reminds me over and over again of the victory that is in Christ, which is just amazing, that's for sure. It's the most life-changing stuff, right? So let's get into why that's so and why the empty tomb matters. Now, as we saw in the video, Mary and Mary went to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. Okay, they were going there to anoint Jesus' body because this was the custom at the time. But kind of imagine how Mary and Mary are feeling right now, right? Their hero, their saviour has just been killed in the most horrific way. Right. They thought he was going to change everything. They thought, uh, you know, he was going to rule the world. But all of their dreams and hopes kind of died along with him uh, as he lay there in the tomb. But here's the thing. Right. Here's the thing which astounds me about Mary and Mary. They went anyway. They just went. And this is an important part of the story because despite everything around them now being hopeless and kind of seemingly destroyed, they still went to minister to Jesus, even though Jesus at that point was not meeting their expectations. I mean, that had to be hard. I mean, really, really hard for them to do. And I kind of have... I suppose a picture in my head of of these two broken hearted ladies with sort of tears of pain and grief rolling down their face when they meet the angel whose face doesn't have tears and grief down. The Bible tells us it was shining like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow as he appears there uh, on the sort of on this sort of tomb and there's this great earthquake that's going on around them. I mean, it's just, this is not, this is not what Mary and Mary are expecting. Oh no. I mean, if you think about their checklist of likely outcomes as they go to the tomb, this is not what they were thinking was going to happen at all. Our story seems to have taken what can only be described as a very interesting turn, as I'm sure we can all agree. Now, here's the other fascinating thing. The guards uh, stationed around the tomb, right? They were there because they were to, to sort of guard the tomb. The Roman authorities feared that people would come and steal Jesus's body. So the guards are there watching this and they see this. They feel the earthquake. They see the angel rolling away the stone like a bowling ball, at least in my head. And you know what they do? Oh, they faint. Oh, yes. Good going, guys. They kind of fall over, right? And that just amuses me. I don't know why it just does. But the angel says to Mary, Mary, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. 
He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Oh, yes. Hold the press, right? This is the bit of news they were definitely not expecting to hear, right? And it's fascinating to me. Imagine what's going on, right? Let me ask you a question. This is an interesting question for me. Why did the angel roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Why did he do that? Well, it certainly wasn't to let Jesus out, right? I mean, that's going to be obvious as we read the rest of the story, but it certainly wasn't to let Jesus out. So the only conclusion I can come to is that it was to let the women see in, to let them see that the tomb was in fact empty. And so the angel is both telling them that Christ has in fact risen and he shows them that Christ has in fact risen. Come see where his body was lying, the angel says. Come and have a look. Come see for yourself. The two women who were looking for Jesus come face to face with the reality of an empty tomb, with the fact that Jesus isn't there anymore. He is risen. And just like Mary and Mary, as we ourselves look for Jesus and grapple with the idea of his divinity, we have to face the empty tomb. We come face to face, uh, face to face, face to face, I can't even say it, face to face with this whole idea of the resurrection. And face, face to faith actually works in that sentence as well. And this is actually why the empty tomb matters, okay? Because if the tomb wasn't empty, there would be no resurrection. We wouldn't have to face that. And if Christ just died but wasn't raised from the dead, well, then Christianity actually has a huge problem to deal with. It's like, isn't the resurrection 100% gold-plated rubbish, someone once asked. And this, I think, is a great question, because in my mind, it's probably the question to ask, especially if you're looking for Jesus, if you're kind of on that journey like Mary and Mary were. You see, the Bible talks about this. Right? And it says in the book of Corinthians, if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless and your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. Wow. I mean, if there is no resurrection, right, there is no Christian faith. It's useless. The Bible tells us it's useless. And that's why the empty tomb matters. So if you are looking into the Christian faith, then one of the things you should do is study the resurrection. Look at the evidence for the empty tomb. In fact, is there any evidence for it? Now, what I can tell you is Sharon, my uh, amazing and beautiful wife, is going to be talking about this in just a few weeks' time uh, as we carry on our journey through Mark's gospel. Uh, she's going to come to that and go through it in much more detail. So make sure you like the Facebook page, subscribe on YouTube or, you know, head to the website crowd.church uh, and join the email list. And we'll let you know when that's coming out because you're not going to want to miss it. Let me tell you, uh, it's going to be great stuff as we look at the evidence for the resurrection. Now, like Mary and Mary, I personally had to face the empty tomb. People told me that Christ was risen. And then when I was about 18, it was as if I too was seeing that empty tomb. It was as if the angel kind of invited me in and I saw it for myself. I heard it and then I saw it. In fact, this was such a real experience for me. It's changed my life in irrevocable ways. And not just mine. Let's be real, right? There are billions of Christians out there, including scientists and medical professionals, teachers, academics, office workers, tree surgeons, mums, dads, farmers, fishermen, uh, people who are unemployed, poets, artists, missionaries. All of them have faced the empty tune and had their lives transformed because of the resurrection, right? That moment in time when Christ defeated death, where victory came out of tragedy and where life really, truly begins, especially meaningful life. And, it's, and it is the story also of Mary and Mary, 
right? Look at what happens next to these two women. The angel tells them, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Now, we could rock and roll on this whole conversation that the angel is having with Mary and Mary. But I do want to point something out here that isn't immediately obvious uh, when we read this conversation. But it is, I mean, insanely important to our discussion, if I'm honest with you. And it's as simple as this. Mary and Mary are women. Now, I appreciate this is not rocket science. I appreciate this is not a new revelation. And it may even sound a little bit odd. So hear me out on this, right? Because at the time, women were treated incredibly badly. They were not treated as equals. They were lesser people uh, in every way, right, in society and in that culture. So if you wanted to create some kind of credible witness to an event especially something as monumental as the empty tomb, well, then logic would dictate you simply don't choose women. Why? Because they weren't credible. No one would believe them. No one listened to them. At their detriment, I must point out. And we know this, right, because the disciples, when they were told, the men who were grieving, right, and who were, who were lost, they didn't believe Mary and Mary because women weren't credible. Yet these two women become the first evangelists to the cause, the resurrection. And you see, we kind of have three Marys talked about in Scripture, the two at the tomb and Mary, Jesus's mother, right? And they, they seem to be bookending the life of Jesus. Mary was there at the start and these two Marys are there at the end, right? And God put the most incredible news, the most life-altering events, the most uh, insane, amazing, fantastic message into the hands of the least credible, the least trustworthy, the least recognized people in humanity and society at the time. And that kickstarted a huge change in our human history. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? When the world, the culture, the society, the men, even the women themselves had told them, uh, told themselves that their voice was not as important. It was not as important as others. That their worth was not as high as others. God sent an angel to talk to them and let them know that their voice did count and that they were worth something. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's great, isn't it? But let me tell you, it gets better, right? The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. I bet they were. I bet they were frightened, right? When you come face to face with the empty tomb, it is actually something to fear, something to be in awe of, to reverence. It is very real and has very, very definite consequences that cannot be taken lightly. But it also comes with great joy. And I find that this is a really interesting description of the Christian life. It is one we live or should live in fear and reverence of God, that he is God, God Almighty, that he is worthy of our respect in so many ways. It's why we call him Lord. But alongside that, we've been filled with great joy that there is an awesome and holy God that knows me personally and I can know him. I mean, that's insane in itself, right? It is reverential and it is joyful. And that is the Christian faith. And so that's Mary and Mary right there reverential and joyful and they get ready to run to the disciples and then Jesus met them <laughs> oh my goodness I mean oh my goodness can you imagine this scene can you picture what is actually happening here Jesus met them the risen 
Christ, the risen Jesus, the risen Lord, met them. And there is something in that, right, that when we look for Jesus, we find an empty tomb. And in seeing that he has been raised from the dead, he meets us. It is nothing short of remarkable. He met them and he met them first, the women. He chose them first. Let that sink in. And in perhaps what is the most understated part of scripture, it reads, Jesus met them and greeted them. I mean, (laughs) it's great, isn't it? Imagine that, right? Imagine it. You meet the risen Christ for the first time. He is standing there right in front of you. Angels are around, right? The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty because the guy who was dead, you saw die, is now stood in front of you. And the first thing he says is, hi. I love it. I love it. Hi. (laughs) Just great. Hi, Mary. Mary, how are you doing? How are you doing, girls? He greets us, right? Such is the love of God to his people. He greets us. He greets you. He greets me. And you know what? They ran to him, grasped his feet and worshipped him. No kidding. That's what they did, right? And that's why Christians still worship him 2,000 years later. When you meet the risen Christ and you sense his greeting and his pleasure to be with you, you do the only thing you know to do. You worship him. It is the natural response. Now, I love that this first story of, I I just love this first story of Easter. Not only because of the victory of Jesus, not only because we we understand that Christ has been risen from the dead, all the implications of that, but because we can look at the journey of Mary and Mary and see our own story. Wherever we come from, whatever our family or our friends, or our career, we come to a place of facing the empty tomb. We can go from just hearing about the resurrection of Christ to being invited into the resurrection of Christ. From merely standing on the outside to being invited in. And in that place, we meet Christ. And we meet him often in an understated but life-altering way. A place where the risen God, the king of the universe, the creator of the world, the sustainer of life in all his glory and in all his victory simply greets us. He becomes a friend who says hi. He becomes our Lord worthy of our reverence and our worship. And he becomes the source of the greatest joy and hope in our lives. That's the story of Easter. And that's why the empty tomb matters. Thank you, Matt. Uh, A brilliant talk there. I love the video at the beginning. So powerful and loads to think about, loads for us to um, get chatting about after the worship. So if you've got some questions, then do put them in the comments because we'd love to have a talk about the things that you're really wanting to pull out of that talk. So do let us know. So Matt talks there about the before and the after, didn't he? About, you know, the Marys, their their life before Jesus had risen and then their life after. And that's the same of any of us that have had an encounter with Jesus. There was the us before and the us after. And that's our story. And so we're going to hear from someone today. We're going to hear their story. And this is a guy called Chris Kent, who's got a really brilliant story about his before and after and how he met Jesus. Hi, my name's Chris, and um, here's my story of how I became a Christian. At the age of 15, I decided to become a Christian. And um, what led up to that was quite an extraordinary story. I wasn't brought up in a Christian home. In fact, we didn't ever go to church. I may maybe remember the odd Christmas, but never really attending church, never understood what that was all about, to be honest. And um, in fact, life at home was uh, really quite difficult. My parents got divorced when I was two. Uh, I spent a year or so in a children's home. 
which was obviously a, a, a really uh, awful experience as a sort of six-year-old. Um, when I came out of children's home, um, my mum had a really violent uh, boyfriend who was addicted to drink, and so life at home was chaotic and full of violence and and difficulty. And then um, when I was about 11, my mum found out that I could go to boarding school and, and it would be paid for by the government because my biological father was in the army. So it meant that I could go there for free. And so to try and remove me from the chaos at home, my mum sent me off to boarding school. And uh, it went well for a while, but um, eventually that kind of the difficulties that I'd been through and also the rejection um, I just became a really angry kid and I didn't really care about the consequences of things and so I got into drink and I was dabbling in drugs uh, I was looking into the occult and um, I just felt really worthless and powerless and wanted something in my life to give meaning and um, this led to me um, breaking out of boarding school one night breaking into a local shop and I got arrested and I also got expelled from boarding school in the same night, can you imagine? And uh, so my mum came to pick me up, uh, but shortly before that, my mum and my stepdad had become Christians and they were talking about Jesus, talking about all the wonderful things that he'd done, but to me, it just didn't make any sense. I had no idea how someone who lived 2000 years ago could make a difference in my life. But when she came to pick me up, I realized that Jesus had made a difference in her life, the way that she spoke to me, the love that she showed me. And so uh, I went to church and one night I heard the story of Jesus and I realized that he had died for me and I gave my life to him that evening. And the difference it's made in my life is just uh, amazing. I live with a sense of peace and knowledge that I'm loved by God, that I'm his child, and that he's for me, and he's always with me. Wow, what an amazing story Chris has. And you know, that could be your story too, that before and after, um, whatever your situation is in life, wherever you find yourself now, Jesus can bring that story to your life as well, that peace, that love. We're going to um, go into a time of worship now. So it's just, just a song that we're going to play. We're going to play the words as well. Um, it's called In Grace Alone. And grace, I found a really brilliant definition of grace that I love. It's um, that love that seeks you out when you have nothing to give in return. And that's what we're talking about today. That love that God has for you. The love so amazing that he would send his son to die for you. So John and Anna Grace have put this together for us now. Just um, read the words. Just think about those things that you've heard today as the worship song plays. And then Matt and I will be back afterwards to talk about any of your questions that you have about today so far. I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear you call Father, you work your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to join in your throne But Father, you love me still And in love before you laid the world's foundation Destined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone down to the bone, nothing I did could ever atone, Jesus you 
Love that song. Yeah, Love brilliant. And it just says everything that we've been talking about, doesn't it? It just sort of sums it all yeah, up. It so, yeah, really, really good. Does. Good job, John. Good job, Anna Grace. Thank you so much for doing that for the Easter service. Oh, loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So I'll tell you what I did love, your definition of grace. Yeah, it was pretty good, wasn't it? I love that. Shall I say it again? Yeah, yeah, do it, Sal, because we know you yes. want to. Yeah, I do. I just thought, you know, I might have said it a bit quickly the first time, but I just I really, really liked it. It just really speaks to me about what the heart of grace is. Mm. And it's love that seeks you out when you have nothing to give in return. Yeah, it's great. Great. definitely. So why does that speak to you? I think because sometimes you just don't think that we're worthy of this sacrifice, don't we? Do mm. Sometimes it just feels a bit too big, a bit too much, or I, you know, I sort of don't deserve it, which I don't, and that's the whole point, and that's okay. Um, and that God loves all of us enough, um, you know, to make that ultimate sacrifice. So it's pretty incredible. And it's very simple as well. Um and easy to sort of understand. And I just think that grace is the absolute heart of the message of what we're of what we're kind of sharing with people today. That is, if you can just take that one thing away, it's so important. Yeah, yeah, it is. I love that. Love that. Because you're right, grace is not about what you do, it's about what he did. And mm. um and that's actually that's actually quite freeing. It's also quite hard because um because we live in a culture where it's not easy just to accept something without feeling obligated in some way or feeling like you've got to earn it. Do you know what I mean? And it's uh, grace is quite a tricky concept. I think you can spend years trying to get your head around grace. Even as a Christian, yeah. you can spend a long time getting your head around it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Um, but really, it's quite simple, isn't it? The actual heart of it is very mm. simple. Um, and that that quote just really sums it up for me. So I love that. So great yeah. talk, Matt. Well done. Oh, thanks, Sam. Good I tried, job. I tried my you, best. You did, you did good. Well done. Well done. <laughs> um, in a totally non-patriotic kind of way. <laughs> so tell me, Matt, was there anything, like when you were preparing this talk and when you, when you were doing it, was there anything sort of surprising for you that you hadn't thought about before? Because this is, must be something you've heard of an Easter talk, you know, every year for however many years. Yeah, I've heard a lot of Easter talks. Uh, I've been around yeah. a little while, so I've definitely heard a lot. I think there's, whenever you look at scripture, I don't know about you, Sal, but whenever I read scripture, um, I always try and read it like it's the first time. Do you know what I mean? So you you read these stories which you've heard time and time again, mm -hmm. but to try and read it as though you haven't, which means just looking at every word which is written on the page and just, just asking yourself, do I understand what's going on here? Mm. And so when I did that, and I kind of, I, I just asked myself, the, I don't know if I've ever asked myself the question, 
I've just kind of heard it and never really questioned it, but why did the angel roll away the stone? Why why did he do that? Because it wasn't it wasn't to let Jesus out. And that was one of my things. It's like it wasn't to let Jesus out at all. Um it was so that the the Mary and Mary could see in, and later when the disciples go to the tomb, they can see in as well. Um, mm. And the actual fact they needed to see and experience the resurrection, rather than yeah. just be told by it as well. And I think, um, and that was great for me because I, you know, I'm a big fan of the Christian faith. It's not just a mental exercise, although academically I can go, yes, this all makes a lot of sense. But actually, Christianity is something to be experienced. God is something to be experienced. He's something, it's not just something to be told about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, no, I like that. And the other thing that really tickled me, I think that came across in the video, was when Jesus greeted them. It just yes. says he greeted them. I just have it in my head. You just go, yeah. hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hi, guys. What's hey, guys. Up? Yeah, I love, Nicola's put that in her comments, actually. I never appreciated how important the simple word hi is. It means that he sees you and when you feel lost and alone and feel unseen, he still yeah. sees you. That's, yeah. Super powerful. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Nicola, yeah. for that. Yeah, I really yeah. loved as well, Matt, what you brought out about women in that part of the story because I think mm. some people feel that, you know, Christianity perhaps doesn't value women or the Bible perhaps doesn't value women. And this shows, or you've shown like through your talk, that the heart of Jesus show time and time again actually how important women were yeah oh. absolutely and that, you can't get away from that and to and actually to the point where almost a lot of this talk was going to be centered around that um mm. especially at the moment in today's society and culture isn't there's a lot of conversation around this topic i think i think if there's one thing that comes across from scripture certainly the scripture that i read um god is pro women and he is pro men and that's that's the end of the story. So much so, mm. he does a lot of stuff which is surprising where women are concerned, especially mm. with how they were dealt with at the time, do you know what I mean, or treated at the time. Yeah. yeah. And he he just elevates them to a position that where society just, they just don't get it at all. And, mm. then, and then Paul comes along later in scripture and he says, uh, yeah, there's no male or female. There's no slave or free person. We're all one. I mean, this was revolutionary, radical mm. teaching. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and I just love that. I I, I love that. And like yeah. you say, that the fact that it it just draws out that Mary and Mary, especially Mary Magdalene. I mean, it emphasises. So the two Marys, just in case you don't know, one's Mary Magdalene and one is Jesus's aunt, right? And Mary Magdalene. A lot of Marys. I mean, did they struggle with women's names in those days, <laughs> or you know, come on? Just, Where's the Stephanie, the aunt of Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That's maybe one to ask the Lord. It's a bit like if you want to be involved in crowd church live stream, you have to be called Matt, apparently. Yeah, apparently uh, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but no, I thought I thought it was brilliant. And I thought um, Mary Magdalene, she had such an interesting past. It wasn't, wasn't brilliant, her past. It was definitely checkered. And Jesus restores her. And she becomes the first evangelist to the resurrection. And this is such a powerful thing. You know, I mean, she wasn't a woman of education. She wasn't a woman from a good house. This was, you know, she, she'd had a past. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But yet Jesus didn't care. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think that's yeah. super powerful. I think it's super powerful. I think too. And I think that's really relatable for today as well, for people who think that they're not worthy or, you know, that they bring so much baggage with them. I mean, look at Chris's story and his past mm. and everything that he was saying that he'd been through up until that point where, uh, you know, he met Jesus and his life changed for good. And that's kind of what we've seen with, with Mary, isn't it, in, in yeah. the story as well. So, yeah, yeah. it is incredible. Um, yeah, it so, is. yeah, brilliant. It is. Let me ask you a question then, uh, as we're talking about Mary and Mary and ladies. Um, well, have you have you found throughout your Christian walk? I suppose there's three different three different things to think about here, isn't there? There's what you perceive God's view of women is, what you think Scripture's view of women is, and what you perceive people's view in the church of women. Are. And of course, they're all going to be at very different levels. Okay. What, what have you experienced? Yeah, controversial question, Matt. I like it. Way well, to spring Sunday, that on me. It's Easter. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Planning yeah, and preparation. Think... I think, um, yeah, the, it's a difficult one. It's a really interesting question because I think I grew up in a church that didn't necessarily value women in the way that they should have been valued, that in terms of their contribution to 
um, to church and, and things like that. And sometimes I think the danger is that we can take the church's view as God's view. Yeah. And we need to be very careful about that. We need to actually kind of go to the Bible and talk to God and see what God says about something rather than just taking what someone else says. And I know that people have been turned off from God and from Jesus because of what the church says. Mm. Whereas actually, if you went to God, if you went to Jesus, you'd find that they're saying something completely different. Um, I'm not at all, obviously church is brilliant. and I'm not kind of saying that it's not a good thing at all. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that what we're being told is actually God's truth. So I grew up thinking that uh, the church viewed women as second class citizens. And I knew I knew that that didn't sit right with me, not just from a kind of feminist or female point of view, but I just knew that that wasn't what God thought mm. or how God felt. Um, and I knew that in my heart, but I didn't really have the understanding of the of the Bible to be able to kind of say, well, it says this, this, this and this. Um, I just didn't have that understanding. And it was mm. when um, I moved to Liverpool when I was in my very early 20s. Um, and just a couple of years ago then. Just a couple of years ago, yeah, not long ago, just a few months, and um, and and joined Frontline Church, which you know, Crowd Church is a part of Frontline mm. Church based in Liverpool, so it's still part of Frontline Church. And John, who's the senior pastor, he did an absolutely amazing preach about women and how God sees women and how the church should see women, and that mm. just was like, yes, everything he's saying is everything that I knew was true. I just couldn't say it quite yeah, like yeah. that and yeah. have the sort of, you know. So I know that God values women and wants to promote women and you know sees women as equal to men. And and so I hope that people do kind of understand that as well. That in God's eyes, women are definitely not second class citizens mm. and have absolutely valuable things to say and give. So Absolutely. yeah, that's a long answer to your question there, Matt. No, I thought it's fascinating, Sal. I, I appreciate you sharing because I think it's not just the church. I, I mean, I grew up in the seventies, eighties, and nineties, and uh, and the, the noughties, and um, I would say it was culture and society. You, you know, very had some real issues, has not it? Very sexist issues and in, in, in very sexist ways of thinking. And yeah. so I think it's great to see the conversation happening. Um, a, a lot more over recent years about the role of women in society and the equality of women. Um, and I yeah. guess all of that to say is uh, women, we're all equal and you're welcome here at Crowd Church, right? Love having, pe having uh, people from both sides uh, involved in what's going on. It's great fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, have we got any more questions anybody else wants us to ask? I'm just having a little look in the comments here. We talked about the importance of that Jesus, that greeting from Jesus. Yeah. Um, uh, no, is the answer to your question. Right, okay. So I want to ask you a question then, Matt, that kind of I've been thinking about and see if you uh -oh. can help to answer this question. And what happened between Good Friday and Easter Sunday? <laughs> this is one of those big, deep theological questions. Yeah, uh, it's a I'm very not getting good on question. to the top yeah this is the, this is the big question first and then you can tell me and about we'll the, do chocolate. the chocolate okay yeah. cool yeah okay so the answer actually to this question is we're not entirely sure okay we can have a bit of a guess um scripture itself has kind of leads us in a certain direction um but it is it isn't very definite um and what i mean by that is what i guess what a lot of people think is because it's a, it is a fascinating question you know jesus dies on the friday he's raised again uh, on the sunday what mm. happened in the meantime? Well, we know his body was in that tomb, right? Yeah. Uh, until Mary, Mary, go in and have a look. So we know where his body was. So spiritually, where was his spirit at? Um, and there's a few clues in scripture. Like when Jesus is on the cross, we're going to see this in a week or two's time. When he's on the cross, he's surrounded by two robbers who are dying. And he says to one of them a really interesting statement. He says, today you will be with me in paradise. And so there's a question is, what is paradise? And, and where was it that Jesus went? And Jewish thinking at the time thought that there was a place um, of the dead called Shoal. It was like a protected realm that the Messiah would come and sort of release all of the souls, you know, that sort of died before Christ came and died, I suppose. Um, and, he, and the Bible talks about leading captivity captive. And Peter talked a little bit about this um, going forward. But it, I'm, it's an interpretation. It's not a theology. 
so I think probably the most the most important thing here is there is spiritually a place where Jesus went to between Good Friday and Sunday. The chances are very strong that he went down. He descended. The Bible talks about him descending. Who he met, where he went to, was he in hell, was he in this protected realm of the dead? We're not entirely sure. Mm. But the Bible doesn't really focus on it, which gives us a clue, which says actually the important things here are that Jesus died, he was buried, and then he rose from the dead. And and there are implications surrounding that for us. Uh, mm. And maybe that's what we should focus on. But I think it's a fantastic question. And I think I don't actually fully know the answer. Uh, having spent a fair bit of time looking at it, I still, I still don't, I'm still not sure. I don't know if that helps right. you. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. I think it's good to know, isn't it? If you don't know the answer, that other people don't know the answer as well. And if we clearly, if it clearly doesn't tell us in the Bible, then that's not the bit that we, we need to sort of focus on. As you were saying, mm. we're focusing on the fact that Jesus died and then on the Sunday he rose again. And I'm mm. very, very grateful for that and that we can celebrate that today. Um, so very importantly, then, before we move on to the catch up, Cabri's or Nestle? There's shouldn't no even be trying to think about this. There's no conversation. There's no conversation. After What's three, that? after three, and tell me what it is. One, two, three, Cabri's. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. Nestle, yeah. I don't. OK, so why are we talking about if you've not read the comments, one of the questions in the comments uh, was, what's the best type of Easter egg? Is it a Cadbury's Easter egg or a Nestle Easter egg? And um, that's why we're talking about chocolate. And we always try and answer your questions, the theological ones and the maybe not so theological questions. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's I, I, it's not even a question. No. Cadbury's all day long. I, I can't believe Cadbury's. that even came up, uh, if that's I'm honest me. with you. I think it would be a more interesting question if you threw in things like Thornton's or Lindor. Or, or Hotel Chocolat. Or, Hotel you know. Chocolat. Or, you know, and obviously there are other brands. Uh, Elizabeth Harris oh, chocolate, good. for example, would be uh, high. We actually, for our Easter, we got, yeah, we didn't get Easter eggs. We got these Easter boxes that um, Elizabeth Harris made, which are stunning. Let me tell you, stunning. I mean, hang on, hang on, hang on. And I got these. Yeah. Okay. You should have a word with Same with uh, with uh, Lizzie Harris. <laughs> get get into the catch up, I think, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble now. Right, quickly, uh, I'm going to roll the catch up, VT. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to this week's Sunday catch up. For those of you who don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Josh Edmondson. I'm a member of the team here at Crowd Church, and I'm a student studying physics at the University of St. Andrews. If you have never watched the stream before, welcome. It's great to have you here. Let me just quickly explain what Catch Up is all about. Every week we'll get in pictures and videos from members of the community, and we put them on the stream in this segment called Catch Up, just so that we get a feel for what everyone else is getting up to. Before we go on to the catch up segment of this video, happy Easter. It's great to be able to share this amazing day with you, even if it's via a digital medium. Easter's such an incredible time, particularly when you stop and really think about what Easter actually means. When you look at the incredible symbolism behind the act of Jesus, which we celebrate on Easter, it's just mind bending when you think about it. I hope that came across in this talk and just how incredible it is that we even get to celebrate this occasion, that it even happened in the first place. But I will leave the talk with you to think about over the coming weeks and we will move on to the catch up segment in usual fashion. I will kick things off with something that I've been up to this week. This week was my final week of Easter break. So I spent some of the time just making sure that I've got everything done for Monday, which I need to get done as I go back to studying physics at full speed until the end of term. But I also got to meet up with quite a few of my friends, which was really nice. I'm enjoying the slightly lifted restrictions. I don't know about you, but the rule of six, it feels like such a liberty after so long not being able to do anything like that. So taking the opportunity to make the most of these rules, that's that's been really nice this week. Really, really nice. But that's enough from me. Let's get on on to the catch-up clips. Thank you. 
thank you very much for sending all those in. It's really great to see what everyone is getting up to throughout the week. If you want to see your stuff on Catch Up, please do send it in to the WhatsApp number that you will have seen on the bottom of the screen throughout this service. Or you can use hashtag crowdcatchup on Instagram and I will go through the hashtag at the end of each week and find your post and put it on Catch Up for you. So if you want to see your stuff on Catch Up, please send it in via one of those two means. But that's all from me this week. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Josh. Josh. Yeah, good always good to see catch up. Catch up. Yeah, mm. I like the catch up music. I'm not going to lie. I kind of start swaying to the catchy. <laughs> <laughs> catch up music is yeah. catchy. Yeah, yeah. It might get the everybody was kung fu fighting sound out of your head as well. Well, now you've said it again now. So that's it. It's back in there now, isn't it? Everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> Oh, Nicola just said she didn't realise catch up was happening because she had a picture to send. Nicola, still send it in and we can show it next week. So please do send that. And anybody else that would like us to share pictures or anything in catch up, do send it to us and we can use them next time. Absolutely. Catch up happens most weeks. Just so you know, it does it does keep happening and keep going forward. OK, so Sal, you sent me a photo during that. Shall I bring that on screen? Yeah, go on. Quick pick of this is my nephew Seb who got baptized today. There's him wearing his nicely on brand t shirt, I have decided. <laughs> um, and that's him. That's him just, I'm guessing, just before he was dumped because he looks quite dry there. So, yeah, that's a picture of the gorgeous Seb. Yeah, yeah, it should say I've almost decided. I'm just about to decide, maybe. <laughs> no, I've decided. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. <laughs> well done, Seb. It's great to see you getting baptized there. Well done, bud. Now, uh, do come back and join us next week uh, as we are going to carry on our journey with uh, our study of Mark's Gospel. We have got the amazing James Sloan back. Uh, he's going to be carrying on our look, uh, like I say, at Mark's Gospel. We've got catch up. We've got worship. Uh, Sal, I'm here. Are you here next week? I might be. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> A little okay. surprise for you. <laughs> Drummer, you're going to have to tune in to find out because we just don't know. I'm going to have to tune in to find out because we just don't know. Uh, it's been great to have you uh, with us. Uh, thanks for joining us this week. Now, if you are part of a church, great. Uh, but if you're not part of a local church uh, and you would like to become a member of a church, then why not consider joining us here at Crowd? We live stream every Sunday at 4 p.m. on YouTube and on Facebook. We have a midweek community group on Wednesday evenings, although as Matt Crew quite rightly pointed out in the comments, the email that went out uh, says we have a disciple group this week. Uh, we don't. Uh, there's no group this week. We're having a week off because it's Easter. Uh, so ignore what was said in the email. That is entirely my fault um, for not telling Joella that actually we'd, uh, we'd postponed it. Can't get the staff, can you? No, I'm really sorry. It's just this. I have no excuse. Uh, if you have enjoyed the live stream, then why not head over to the website crowd.church, www.crowd.church, uh, and there you can just put in your name and email address, and we will let you know about an hour before we go live, when we go live, and what's coming up, so you never miss the Crowd Church live service. Oh, no, that's that's what happens. So do go to the website, give us your email address, and we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, definitely. And don't forget to send us a message if we can pray for you or help you in any oh, yeah. way. Um, we would love to do that. So there you are. There's the number that you can get in touch with us. So just to say, side? really, have a brilliant rest of Easter Sunday. Don't eat too much chocolate. Or, yeah, why not? Eat, eat a lot of chocolate. Go on. It's Easter Sunday after all. And uh, I'm off to cook a roast dinner now. Are you? So uh, I will see you very soon. Indeed. So the way we're going to close out the live stream, in case you don't know, we are just going to play uh, another track, another music track. Uh, this one is called uh, When I Survey. It's an old hymn which talks about looking at the cross of Christ, which is very apt for Easter. Do stay, do enjoy. If you're new to the whole Christian thing, just read the words and just let them wash over you because it's quite a fascinating thing. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the service. I've enjoyed being here. Sal, it's been great to, to as always, do crowd with you. Uh, yeah, it's been brilliant. <laughs> Matt's put here, today was clucking awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite sure how to respond to that. Uh, brilliant. Bless you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you again Have soon. Have a great Bye week, everyone. Bye. 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 When
when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Of glory die my richest gain I count the loss and poor contempt on all my Christ my God All the vain things That charm me most I sacrifice Them to His His hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did as such love and sorrow. I thank you for the cross, I thank you for the cross, I thank you for the cross, my Lord. I thank you for the cross, I thank you for the cross, I thank you for the cross, my Lord. Cross